The lightnings shone upon the ground. The earth was moved and shook with all. Oh, how amiable are thy dwellings, O thou Lord of hosts. My soul hath a desire and longing to enter into the courts of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The lightnings shone upon the ground. The earth was moved and shook with all. The Lord be with you. And with the last prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy, mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, <clears throat> have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who on the mount didst reveal to chosen witnesses an only begotten Son, wonderfully transfigured, in raiment white and glistering, mercifully grant that we, being delivered from the disquietude of this world, may be permitted to behold the King in his beauty, who with thee, O Father, and thee, O Holy Ghost, liveth and reigneth one God, world without end. Amen. Grant to us, Lord, we beseech thee, the Spirit to think and do always such things as are right, that we, who cannot do anything that is good without thee, may by thee be enabled to live according to thy will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I think that we, as long as I am in this tabernacle, through your up by putting you in remembrance, I will be shortly I must pull off this my family, even as our Lord is in Christ, and she is me. I will think that you may be able to pass my deceit and have these things always in me. For we have not followed cunningly by the favors, and we may know not to you how I have been followed with this Christ. Be the Lord with my witness of the good master. For your sake, in God the Father, I am Lord. He may be such a voice to him from the action of the Lord. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am all true. 
Thanks be to God. Thou art fairer than the children of men, <clears throat> full of grace are thy lips. My heart is indicting of a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made unto the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is the brightness of the everlasting light, the unspotted mirror, and the image of his goodness. Hallelujah. The Lord be in my heart, on my lips, and so in my right hand, worthy of the name of the Holy Ghost, for the name of the Holy Son, the Son, the Holy Ghost, Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the ninth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 28th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. And it came to pass, about in eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistered. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone, and they kept it close, and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. Praise, Praise be to thee, thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Here we are. Good morning. It's uh, it's another lovely morning in Chico, 
going to be just barely 100 degrees, no problem. Now, our ACW wants to announce on this in this warm weather, our upcoming ice cream social, which is a couple of weeks away on the 20th of August. And there's a sign up sheet there on a clipboard for you to bring either cherries or nuts or whipped cream or ice cream or toppings or whatever it is you want to bring. It's always fun and make sure you're there. In our summer schedule, our Sunday school is still on vacation, but Wednesday mass and prayer lab do return this week, Wednesday evening, August the 9th. So 5.30 mass, 6.45 begins our uh, study of experiencing God once again. Uh, so those who are in that study, make sure that you pick up on the homework that you left off when I got sick. And we're back in the saddle again. Now, there is a special celebration today for the 50th anniversary of Geeti and my marriage. Actually, it was last Friday night, uh, but this is just two days later. You're, you're celebrating us. Thank you for this. Uh, it follows the second service today. So if you want to double back, please do and feast with us. It's going to be a, a happy occasion. I have been forbidden for looking down through the glass doors downstairs. So I don't know what's being planned, but it frightens me a little bit. I hope it's okay. Anyway, flowers are on the altar and flowers for the altar are signed up on the wall outside. And that sheet, please choose a date that celebrates your life or that of others that you love. And an anonymous pledge of $10,000 given to our carpet and floor uh, redo fund is seeking matching gifts for the renewing of those car those carpets. We have about 13,000 something or other in the fund. And uh, if we can get up towards 20,000 total, it, we will be there <clears throat> and we'll get a, a wonderful floor out of it. This is only 28 years old, but you know, it's had a hard life. So we wanna see that it gets replaced. Okay. Well, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Mercifully grant that we, being delivered from the disquietude of this world, may be permitted to behold the King in his beauty. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Our creeds declare that the church is one holy, Catholic and apostolic. One, because there is only one permanent gathering together of all believers in Christ that will rise to meet him in the clouds and our unity will be in him. Holy, because we are chosen, blessed, sanctified and set apart from the world. Catholic, because one doctrine from the beginning has held us by our vows to the trinity of persons and the unity of the Godhead and the dual nature of Jesus and his miraculous life. And apostolic, because our first members and all members ever since have believed the report of eyewitnesses. This faith did not arise from dusty chambers of religious scholars aiming to invent the system, the best system of belief. Nor did it echo the fevered sleep of visionaries with wild tales of Olympus. Our faith rests on the testimony of real life events that happened to a band of fishermen, simple Galilean laborers who saw and touched and held and ate with the Lord of life and some even saw him on the mountaintop, filled with light and speaking with patriarchs of long past. All the miracles of Jesus, the healings of lifelong handicaps, blindness, bedevilment, his walking on water, feeding thousands with scraps, the water made wine, and raising dead people to life, make a case for a man who God uses and powerfully but when they saw Jesus risen from the grave, having been assured that he was truly killed on a Roman cross, pierced in hands, feet, and heart, 
This one walks into a closed room and greets them, smiling. This eyewitness report held a message for all the world. Jesus is the Lord, your God. Worship him, trust him, and listen to his witnesses. They're willing to die for this testimony. Christ lives, and he is ever living. This is the amazing good news that spread through our planet in those early centuries. The apostolic church, a gathering together of all who believe their report. The resurrection did not simply occur as a shocking surprise either. There were signs, though they noticed them only afterward. Jesus promised it several times that the Son of Man would go to Jerusalem, be arrested and crucified, and on the third day rise again. They never knew what to make of it until the day it happened. There were other signs. The angel who told Mary about the son she was asked to bear, his name would mean God the Savior, and he would reign over a kingdom without end. As the Holy Spirit enveloped her, surely the man-child she would give birth to must be the Son of God. The Son of God ruling forever certainly cannot have his ending on a cross, and that's all. The star that brought Magi from the East spoke the same story in the language of sages and astronomers. So did the angelic choirs who sang for shepherds the night of our Savior's birth. Over and again, reminders came, reminders that the Jewish scriptures held that promise of a Messiah who would die and rise again the third day. The Psalms, Isaiah, Daniel, Jonah, the law and the prophets whisper hints at his power over death. Only God has power over death. Jesus raised at least three people from death. Then he raised himself. He was raised himself from a brutal death. Of this historic fact, we have the eyewitnesses. From the day Jesus called Peter and his fishing companions to follow him and catch men, the message to the world was that the kingdom of heaven was coming, a hopeful message to a beaten and defeated people. His words and miraculous deeds were creating a following for Christ and speculations of who he was, according to prophecy. But one day Jesus took with him only his three most trusted friends, Peter, James, and John. They scaled a high mountain, possibly Tabor, nearly 2,000 feet in elevation. Those of you who have made the climb from Lake Helen to Lassen Peak have done a bit more than Tabor, just a little, and at a higher altitude, but both are a respectable climb. Still puffing with the effort, the apostles saw Jesus kneel and pray and commune with his father, as he so often did. But while he prayed, Jesus was transfigured. Light seemed to emanate from him, through his clothes, his skin, his hair, something like the vision John would later get while on Patmos. This was evidence of the divine nature, usually shrouded for them when they walked among the population. This shining was not for the crowds, but these three were chosen to witness it. John later wrote that we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Peter would write that we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. <clears throat> this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. The gospel accounts all shared the event. Though the Lord admonished his friends to keep quiet about what they had seen, that silence was only until he had risen from the dead. The transfiguration was a turning point in the life and ministry of Jesus. 
<clears throat> from this moment on, his face was aimed at Jerusalem. People felt the change, and many began to avoid him afterwards, sensing some portent of a grim and unpleasant fate that he was moving toward, heedless of the danger. What made the change? The disciples saw Jesus standing and talking with two other men who had appeared on the mountaintop, whether by their clothes or speech or because Jesus told them himself afterward. They reported that the men were in fact Moses and Elijah. Moses, the founder of Judaism, as a system of feasts, fasts, sacrifices, and laws to order the children of Israel in a way to conquer and establish a nation for the next great prophet to come to. That prophet would be the only law other lawgiver, Jesus himself. Elijah, the epitome of prophets sent by God to declare heaven's displeasure with King Ahab and the general heresy of Israel. This rustic prophet who faced 850 pagan priests on a mountaintop of his own and won back the hearts of the populace to Jehovah, actually never died, but was taken up to heaven alive without dying. These two great men spoke to Jesus, and Peter, James, and John were overcome with the weight of the presence of God. Sleep or stupor or fainting drove them into a semi-consciousness. Peter babbled some idea of making tents for pilgrimages that people might make to see these three holy men. God cut him off with a sudden cloud and the words, this is my beloved son, hear him. The force of this true vision or revelation on that mountaintop carried the apostles through the harrowing days ahead. If they had ever doubted that their friend, mentor, and leader was Messiah, the Holy One of God, God somehow in the body of a man, this experience ended all debate. He had been revealed. A man yet filled with the brightness of lightning and inner light that was with him displayed the fact that God had indeed become one of us, not by diminishing his glory, but by taking the human nature to himself and selectively hiding that glory from the eyes of those who would only misunderstand. You have seen or felt or heard the presence of God. Some people are gifted to hear from him often. All of us have his presence available to us at every moment. Do we seek him out? Are we afraid of our God? Maybe we should be afraid of him. 21st century Christians are often too familiar with the God whom Jesus describes as the one who can kill the body and also send your soul to hell. Fear him, says his son. But your encounters with the living God have brought you to a church this morning and often on Sundays. He's made that impression on you that means you must return to him, take a stance of worship toward him, offer yourself once again at his altar and receive of his blessed body and blood. This is a serious faith. Peter, James, and John came down the trail with a look on their faces the others must have asked them about. For the meantime, their lips were sealed, but they had been given the gift of faith, a faith that nothing can break. You don't just believe, you know, and that gift others can sense. Your divine purpose is set by God in you. They may stay with you or leave you, but you have that assurance of the truth nothing and no one can shake. Nothing will take it from you. People like to know somebody who really believes that way. So what does your witness tell others about God? Is he very large and scary? Is he intimate and comforting? Does he strengthen your resolve to live a life that gives him back the glory he deserves. Have you climbed your own mountain and done business with your Lord? What kind of witness 
are you? If the faith is going to survive another generation, we have to tell it and tell it again. Christ was born, attended by angels and a star in the east. Not two months old yet, and he was proclaimed Messiah in the temple by Simeon and Anna. He knew his nature as man and as God, even as a child, and grew up obedient and wise. The rest of his story is long and wonderful to tell, but two events were witnessed by several, and they prove the rest to be true. He was revealed on a mountaintop as God the Son, shining in his own light before two men who stood for the law and the prophets. And he rose from death on the third day after the cross. I, for one, will die, if need be, to carry that truth into this world. There is no other person on earth whom I will call my God. O God, who on the mount didst reveal to chosen witnesses thine only begotten Son, wonderfully transfigured, in raiment white and glistering, mercifully grant that we, being delivered from the disquietude of this world, may be permitted to behold the King in his beauty, who with thee, O Father, and thee, O Holy Ghost, liveth and reigneth one God, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. All thanks to the Lord, and of thine own, we give it to you.
plus the sacrament is offered this day in the name of God. Please remember in the prayers of the sick, aged, and suffer of our fellow Christians, our families, and friends. We especially pray for Louise, Danielle, Rochelle, Andrea, for Tracy, Donna, Joy, Frank, Sarah, Patty, Leanna, Justin, Mark, Carol, Jim, Davis, John, Eva, Lisa, Neil, David, Gary, Larry, who's a priest, and and thank you for your continued prayers for my recovery. I am much less recovered than this. And for the dying, we pray for the well. We pray also for the lost, prodigals, and atheists for Natalie, Joshua, Mark, Christina, Liz, Keith, Cheryl, Katie, Heidi, Adrian, <coughs> Heather, Uriah, Megan, Gary, Paul, and Scott, James, and Imran. And for all cherished, to turn back from their dark purpose to God. To God. Of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for God's guidance for Don Ross, Isaac, Julie, Randy, Stevie, Andrew, Angela, Derek, and James. With special intentions, offering up prayers for Doug, for Jamal and his family, for Randy and his family, for Eric and his family, for Mooney and for Dolores, for Garrett and Addy, for Bogey's Cafe here in our building with us, for all fire, police, EMS. And dispatch workers, God's protection and blessing for America's return to Christ. We pray, and for our Iran mission uh, that is now broadcasting in 13 seasons, for the Women's Resource Clinic here in town, and for the babies born and unborn, and that God's will should be done in our lives and those around us. So may we be witnesses. And we pray for those in our service, especially Gavin Douglas, Sebastian, Canaan. Cameron and Reese, for all travelers, for our children and youth, especially the South St. Augustine's and the Providence of Christ the King. And are there any birthdays to be blessed today? We pray for those in Christian marriage. Are there any anniversaries other than mine? I'll uh, also pray for them in service. So we do give thanksgiving to God. <clears throat> for the wonderful proclamation of the truth of who he is, that he is the light. When Jesus says, I am the light of the world, he ain't kidding. Uh, and he's shown that light on that mountaintop to three faithful witnesses who were unshaken in faith for the rest of their lives. So now let us pray for the whole state of Christ. Almighty and ever living God, who by the holy apostle has taught us to make prayer and supplication and to give thanks to all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer in thy divine majesty. Be seeking thee to inspire continually the universe of church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace of heavenly Father to all bishops, especially to Blair our Archbishop, Donald and Scott our bishops, and other ministers, especially Brian and David Eakins, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and mighty word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly gifts, and especially to this congregation, dear present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants who part of this life and that day of fear, be teaching me to grant that by the merits and that, that be teaching me to grant thy continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow the good examples. That with them we may be partakers of the heavenly kingdom, 
that this the Father for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament for your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly you. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, may maker of all things, judge of all things. We acknowledge you that we have found that for the sins and the justice, which we are on the hand of God, no previous to the action of our God, the word of the name, the inside of our own majesty, provoking most justly that the wrath of the saints against us. We do mercy of them. The heart of the Son, the Lord of the Lord, the Lord of the Son, and 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 the Lord of the Son, for thy Son, our Lord of Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all the attack, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the King's Squad, to be on the Lord of the Son, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who will this great mercy, has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who, with hearty repentance and true faith, turn out of them. Have mercy upon me, pardon, deliver from all your sins, confirm, and strengthen you with all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And dear, with comfortable words, our Savior Christ, accept them to all who will return to him. Come unto me, all ye which avail and are hidden with and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to his hands, that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul says. This is a true sign, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John says. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is appreciation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Give me the best. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is he and right so to do. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty everlasting God, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, thou hast caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of thy glory in the face of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glory in today, evermore praising thee, and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. O Zan, amen. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our heavenly Father. For that thou, thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who may bear by his one oblation of himself, one sovereign, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice. Oblation and satisfaction of the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel commands the communion, a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take heed. This is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, 
which is shed for you and for men for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall think of and remember us for me. Wherefore, Lord, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make clear before thy divine majesty. To these thy holy gifts we now offer to thee the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks. For the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the sin. <clears throat> and we must come to beseech the merciful Father here, and of thou mighty goodness, not say to bless, and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receive them in the according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body. And blood. And we earnestly desire thy father and goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of the passion. Here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies. To be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice in the day, on the season, that we and all of us who shall be partakers of this holy communion, worthy to receive the most precious body and blood of us, Son Jesus Christ, be filled by grace and heavenly benediction, made one body with him who may love us and we in him. And although we are unworthy for our manifold sins to offer to be any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bound and obedient service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning all things through Jesus Christ our Lord. By with me, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O God, Almighty, world of the time. Amen. Now the Savior Christ hath called us to the bold say. Our Peace of the Lord be always with you. And with us. The Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. Not presume to come to this thy table for mercy for us in our own righteousness. But in thy manifold and great mercy, we are not worthy so much as we gather up to come into thy table. Thou art the same in what these properties are, the patterns. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so do we the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and the name of God, that our simple bodies may be made rich by his body, and our souls walk with his more precious form, and that we may have a strong be in us.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him, take us away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy of God, this one and only. But speak the word only in my soul which I not be. Lord, I am not worthy of God, this one and only. But speak the word only in my soul which I not be. Lord, I am not worthy of God, this one and only. But speak the word only in my soul which I not Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the freezer and dark body, and soul, and the soul, and the Tell the vision that ye have seen to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for the thou dost not say to feed us with thee with the seed, peaceful in this week, with the spirit of food and most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. God, the cure us that I have favor and peace for us. That we are very members in corporate and mystical body of us, which is the blessed company of all faithful people. We are also heirs to hope of that everlasting kingdom. By the merits of his most precious death and passion, we humbly beseech thee, O heavenly Father, so we success with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship. We also should words that thou hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom be in the Holy Ghost. Be all honor and glory in the world without him. Amen. Let us pray. For God, who in the glorious transfiguration of thine only begotten Son, 
did confirm the mystery of the faith by the testimony of the Father. And in the voice which came down from the bright cloud, did marvelously foreshadow the perfect adoption of the Son. God save and thy mercy to make us co heirs with this glorious King and partakers of his glory through the same Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Depart in peace. Peace, peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you this day and the name of Jesus, always. God has declared that I am ready to come up cheaply in the throwing mercy of his vision. Part of the path to us such a measure by grace. To be running away by commandments, may attain thy gracious promises, and to be partakers of thy heavenly strength. Through Jesus Christ, Lord. 